God is good. All the time. time. Let me jump right out of that seat. So how's your day going so far? Good, wonderful. Nobody said bad. Anybody have a bad day so far? The same people every week have a bad day. There's a common denominator. All right, for those of you who had a bad week, I want to pray for you. Lord, change your attitude. Amen. <laughs> well, we're, uh, thank you. Anyway, that is all you have to do is change your attitude. We talked in Sunday school this morning about Psalm 118, 24. Do you know what that is? I didn't think so. Nobody in my Sunday school class did either. But it's a familiar verse that you'll recognize. It says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, not grumble in it. You married him. <laughs> but even, 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 even in our headaches and even in our illnesses, even in our, our crises, we need to recognize and realize that today is a day that God made. And the only way it gets messed up is if we mess it up. Because God is perfect and he makes perfection. Right? And so we have to look. This is the day God's made. I'm going to rejoice. No matter what happens, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Maybe not your circumstances right away, but rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice that you have another day to live, to breathe, to serve, to minister, to be a part of God's plan. Amen? Amen? So who had a great day today so far? Amen. Well, still got Maureen, just not, not on board yet. <laughs> she what? She didn't get to go to my Sunday school class. Not too many people did. But anyhow, that's, that's neither here nor there, I guess. But here, here's the deal. I was, I was paying a lot of attention to the weather this week. And by the way, welcome to fall. Yeah, it's supposed to be, but it doesn't necessarily even going to make it, okay? This weather is nuts, isn't it? I mean, it's, I mean, that's what God made, but to us, it's just, it's, it's not normal. And so I was thinking about the seasons, you know, because I'm seeing, as I drive down the road, I'm seeing trees actually changing color, and they're not dying. I'm seeing brilliant reds, bright yellows. They're changing, especially if you go down West Virginia in the mountains. They're changing down there. This isn't right. This isn't normal. But I got to thinking about the seasons, okay, and how they change and how I love the changing of the seasons. Don't you? Because I get, I get bored really easily. How about you? I get bored so easily. You know, I, I've, I've always wondered why, why I have to constantly be doing something different. Because I get bored doing the same thing over and over and over. And so I like the changing of the seasons because, you know, I get tired of the snow. I get tired of the... The, the, the summer, I get tired of the fall, I get tired of the spring, and just I really get tired of it all, it changes. And it's, it's something new, it's something beautiful. So I was thinking about you know, all the changing of the seasons, and well, what's your favorite season? Fall, I knew that. Why? It's not too hot, it's not too cold. It's, it's got the cool mornings, but it warms up and makes you feel good. You get to put sweatshirts on, nice fuzzy sweatshirts, but then you can take them off and enjoy the sun. It's perfect. The colors are gorgeous, right? But what comes after fall? Winter, right? How many people love winter? Office workers love winter. I understand that. If you have to work outside, Josh, you love winter? You're a nut. Oh, okay, so it's not the weather, it's, the, it's, it's hunting season, not winter season. There's the difference. What's that? That's another reason not to like it. It's Bailey's birthday. So all of winter is your birthday? No, her birthday's actually fall. Oh, you're such a liar. When's your birthday? December 10th. It's winter. When's your birthday? December 10th. December, no, December 21st starts winter. It just, sometimes, this year it may feel like summer. I don't know. Look at the cool weather we've been having. But we all have a favorite season, right? So now let me ask you a really personal question. Can I get personal with you? I'm going through anyhow. I just want permission. Okay? What's your favorite season in your life? 
After taxes, then he says. <laughs> What's that, Joel? You haven't seen them all? Well, you've had to have a favorite so far. See, that's difficult, isn't it? How many say, you know, I love it when my life is just a shambles and a mess? Yes, I love chaos. Right, Dory? No, we don't love it. You do. You moved in with your daughter. You're a nut, okay? She's stronger. It could mean she's stronger. Depends on how we look at it, right? I have a really cool passage of scripture for you this morning. It's not on the, on the screen because Lynn worked way too late last night and she got home. She didn't even ask me this week if I had scripture. And I did. Okay, so if you, if you have a Bible, it's a book that you probably don't go to very often. It's the book of Ecclesiastes. It's in the Old Testament, Amy. You knew that, right? Okay, if you're looking for it, it's, 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 it's right after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But here, here's what it says. It's chapter 3, starting verse 1. It says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. So what does that mean? There's a lot of times, right? It means in our lives, stuff's going to happen. Did you notice that everyone was a good thing and then a not so good thing? Okay, and so what I was thinking about this week is I was thinking about the seasons on the calendar and the weather. I was thinking about us. And in the seasons of our life. Now, normally when we talk about seasons of life, we talk about, you know, babies, and then we're teens and preteens, and then we're, we're newlyweds and young, you know, 20s and 30s, and then we get middle age, and then we hit the golden years. And there's, my dad said, there's nothing golden about these years is my urine. <laughs> because that's when your body really starts to shut down and not work right and just throw fits at you. And, uh, so, you know, but we talk about these seasons in our lives that we, that we go through. But I, I want to tell you that there's more than just age seasons, okay? It doesn't necessarily depend on your age because we go through many seasons of life every year. You look confused, Sherry. Okay, you just, okay, just got heartburn, indigestion, okay. Okay, what is my next sentence? I don't know anymore. But, but here, we have, we have seasons in our life, okay? And let's say that, 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 that you're having a difficult time at work. Anybody here ever had difficult times at work? Yeah, we all do, right? Okay, now here's the deal. That season of difficulty isn't going to last forever, okay? Good times are coming. See, well, my whole point, I guess, let me, let, me, let me throw my point out there, Dory, so it makes it a little easier. You don't think I have a point? Well, I'm not picking on you. I'm just telling you. Let me, let me explain everything, okay? I think. I'm having a difficult season right now. My brain isn't working too well. But here, here's the deal. We tend to dwell on one aspect of our life. You know what aspect of life that is? The bad, the difficult, the hard, the crises. We dwell on these and we... We, we live in that season, even if we're having a gorgeous fall day in our life, we're dwelling on the cold, dreary winter days that we've endured. And we need to stop doing it. God says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. So there is a time to weep and a time to mourn. There's a time to be sad and sorrow and even hate some things. But there's also a time to dance, a time to laugh. There's a time to be happy and joyful and, and, just, and enjoy everything around you. And those are the ones that we need to focus on more because if we focus on them more, we won't focus so much on the bad things in our life. Now, I'll guarantee you that the bad things are going to come. It's not if, it's when are they going to come. 
And that's just a season in your life you have to deal with. You know, but even in the midst of those, those bad times, you can rejoice and be glad in it. Even in the good times, this is what we fail to do. When things are going really well, we become self-sufficient, self-reliant, and we don't rejoice in it. We don't think this is the day the Lord has made. We say, look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. Look how well I'm treating myself. And we rejoice in us, but we're supposed to rejoice in the Lord. And so my, my main focus this morning is simply to tell you, focus on God in your seasons of life. No season lasts forever. If you're having a really good time, enjoy that time because it's, it's fleeting. It's only temporary. If you're having a really bad time, it's just fleeting. It's temporary. It's not going to last. If you're sort of just floating along in the middle, don't worry. It's going to change. Nothing stays the same. It's constantly going to change. And so I want you to take stock in your life right now and say, where am I at? What season am I living in? What season of my life am I living in right now? And enjoy it. Now, you're saying, but Pastor, you don't understand the misery I'm enduring. You don't understand how many people are against me and, and how messed up my life is. How can I enjoy it? Because you are in Christ. And God knows what you're going through. And God's going to use that situation that you're in, Miss Bailey, to make it glorious for Him and make it glorious for you. So even though you've got to go back to school, and I know school. You don't care because your grades stink. If you cared about grades, you'd care about school. Like your friend here, she's a straight-A student. No, she's not. She's honestly not. Why do you hang out with her? <laughs> a real friend would just keep their mouth shut. Not anymore she doesn't. It says there's a time to love and a time to hate, and I'm telling you what season she's in. <laughs> But, you know, we, we, we do, we get stuck in these, these bad seasons, but we need to rejoice that we, when things are going wrong, okay? Let me, let me pick up my granddaughter for a minute, the one that's here, the oldest one that's here, Elizabeth, okay? When she was born, most of you know, but if you don't, when she was born, she had a lot of medical problems. <laughs> she was. She was a mess. She was, she was terrible. She was in... in, in uh, and, and PQ, NICU, whatever they call it, NICU, PQ, okay, whatever. She was in intensive care. She was stuck in a plastic casket, is what it looked like. And she had breathing tubes, and she had wires, and this and that, and, and feeding tubes, and, and it was terrible. And when she was born, the day she was born, God and I had a conversation. Well, no. We didn't have a conversation. Conversation is two-sided. I let God have it. It wasn't right. It wasn't fair. In that season that we went through, Seems like it would last forever. And I really didn't see how any good, excuse me, I didn't see how any good could ever come out. And for a long time, I blamed God. But then I started to see things and experience things that, that changed my, my attitude, my way, of, my way of being the circumstances. And I realized that this is just the season that we have to go through that she had to endure. And then I started to, to notice and to be thankful for the changes that were taking place in her family.
for the way that we saw God move in everyone. And I just thank God that in an awkward kind of way that we had to go through that season because it made us better than we ever could have been without him. Now, I did not want her to ever suffer or to go through that again, but thank God she was too little to remember any of it. But God used that messed up, sinful process that made her the way she was to bring us closer to him. So I can rejoice in the situation that was there. I don't have to like what happened, but I, I rejoice of the results that happened. So whenever you're facing something difficult, look for God in the midst of it. Okay, at first, yell and scream, and let God have it. But then realize He is God, and His words are true. And he has a plan and a purpose for every person and everything that goes on in our life. And if we just hold on to him in the midst of our bad situations, we'll see him working, we'll see him moving, we'll see him changing lives. So whatever you're going through now that you just think, I can't get through, know that God is there for you. That God will deliver you. And he'll use the pain that you're feeling right now for his glory and to make you shine. Okay, enough sad stuff. Let's say that you're in a season right now of prosperity. You, 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 you feel so over-blessed, you know, more than you ever deserve, more than you could ever earn or whatever you think. You're just... Everything's just going right. You stepped in a pile of manure and it smelled like roses. Okay, that's how good your life's going, okay? It doesn't matter. You got stung by a bee and he, and he felt the pain. You didn't, okay? It's just one of those days, Danny, you know what I'm talking about, but you have them all the time. They just, everything just goes so great, okay? They just, they just, they're just there, okay? It's in those moments that we're often forgetting God. But I'm telling you what, if you want to, if, if the joy you feel now for getting God is so great, think how joyful you'll feel and how blessed you'll feel and how honored you'll feel if you remember God in that season of your life also. It's just something that we have to do. It's something that we have to learn to do in order to experience God. Because God is in your life. God's all over your life. You just have to open your eyes and see it. Every season you go through, the falls, the springs, the winters, the summers. God is there. God is wanting to use that to glorify himself and to grow you to be like his son. And I know it's difficult to do. It's extremely difficult to do when you're in the middle of something, right? But we have to train ourselves to do it. To look for God in every circumstance, every place that we go. We have to see God. See him working. Because I know that, that there's a time to, to be born and a time to die. I know that, okay? I know there's a time to plant and a time to uproot. I know that. Sometimes we just have to, to forget things. You plant something, okay? We try something, it works. Okay, if it doesn't work, tear it up, throw it away. That part of your life is gone. It's uprooted. It's, it's, it's dead. It's gone. A time to kill and a time to heal. We're pretty good at the kill, killing part. We need to start healing now. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. You know how much healthier and happier it would be if we just started dancing more? Figuratively and spiritually? If we would just dance more. We got all the bad stuff down. We got the killing part down. We got the, the, the dying down. We got the mourning down. We got all this stuff down. But we need to turn around and do the good things. And we'll be so much better off for it. Basically, that's all I've got to say this morning is that I know that a lot of you are stuck in your winter. You're stuck in a cold, barren places of your life. But you don't have to stay there. 
But while you're there, this is a day that God made. You may have messed it up, but God made it perfect. And you need to start rejoicing in it. Maybe, if nothing else, rejoice. Man, I learned my lesson, God. I'll never do that again. But you have to rejoice and be glad in it. Now, next week, I don't normally do this, but next week I'm going to talk about all of you in a sermon because next week I want to talk about the imperfect. The imperfect. And I want you to learn how to love the imperfections in yourself and in other people. It's tough to do, isn't it? Because if something ain't perfect, it's flawed. You know, if it's not perfect, it's great. I was thinking about my wife, and believe it or not, she has some flaws. But some of those flaws are things I love about her most. <laughs> so next week we're going to talk about imperfections. And I want you to realize right now that you are not perfect. Your life will never be perfect. But if you're in Christ, it's worth living. Let's pray. Gracious God, we just, we look at you right now, Father, with our, with our lives being a shambles. Or Lord, maybe some of us are really having a great time right now and everything just is coming up roses. And Lord, we just need you to reach out and to help us through our seasons, to enjoy the good times and help us, Lord, to even endure the bad times and learn through them, knowing, Lord, that you're there right beside us, picking, up us, picking us up and carrying us if need be from time to time. But Lord, just help us to enjoy and to see you everywhere we are, knowing that nothing lasts forever. It's all temporary. So enjoy each moment. Because we may not, we may not have tomorrow, Lord. This may be all we have. This may be it. So, Lord, we have to to embrace it, to rejoice in it. Lord, just anoint each family that's here. Anoint each person that's here. Anoint each situation that, that people are going through right now, God. And help us to realize that perfection isn't what we're aiming for. Not in our lives. We're aiming for Jesus, who is perfect. And if we focus on him, Lord, all of our seasons will be glorious. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' holy name.